We were catching nature implings for our farming contract and we came across a lucky impling. So let's see what we get at the start of the episode. Oh. So just as a recap, the last episode we accomplished 93 Hunter, a huge milestone for the account. Um, it means that we can catch dragon implings barehanded without the net whenever we see them across the map of Gillenor, which is incredible. Um, we also were able to get the herb sack and seed box from Tithe Farm, which is again a big upgrade, especially for an ultimate Iron Man. And we also got a glory and a mounted glory in our home. More recently, we just finished leagues with about 11,500 points. Very, very happy with the results of that. And we did some really good bossing. Uh, we also got a pet on leagues, uh, the little Kraken. So this episode, um, you'll see when we finish the Tears of Guthix, what we're going to be planning on doing is as we got 93 Hunter with Herbivore, we've got a lot of herbs to deal with and we've also got a lot of Numulite to deal with. So we are going to use all the Numulite in a Volcanic Mine and buy a bunch of gold ore for 60 smithing. Then we are going to kill ourselves and take all the herbs out of the looting bag. And once we've got a empty inventory before we clean the herbs, we're going to do some quests that require us to go to Entrana, us to have an empty inventory. So, you know, Legends Quest, we're going to try and do for many trials. And there we go, we get 39 room crafting. And let me just show you the listing bag here. So you can see we've got a load of herbs, loads of irrit leaves, loads of querms that we need to kind of deal with. Um, I'm going to slowly get all the secondaries for that. But we're going to do some questing first. And we've got some cleaning up to do. Some of the things to notice we've got in this inventory is the D Schlongi and the Dragon Dagger P++. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get our attack XP up to 60 so that we can wield those. Um, so we're going to continue with Slayer essentially. Uh, lesser Demons is our task, so in between doing like herb runs and stuff we can go kill Lesser Demons. 40 Slayer. 41 slam. Oh, it didn't pop up. But that is 66 magic, which means we have reached our goal. We'll just kill this off and then we'll go and arrange our portals. And then to the volcanic mine. So we're going to redirect the Camelot portal to Current Castle because we don't really use the Camelot portal very much. But Current Castle will be really helpful for Slayer. Preparing for Motherload Mine by doing some temple trekking to get some food. And that should be. 163 raw lobsters, that's pretty good. Um, we'll need that. And during that, we got um, two lumberjack pieces. So that's the full lumberjack set now. Uh, if you were wondering, I was doing um, easy escorts on the Trek 3, um, and then just bailing out if I couldn't complete it. So we're gonna start Volcanic Mine. I just want to show you the starting stats on the old mining XP. So we are 62 mining. Uh, we, we have 21,000 Numulite which is going to be a bunch of games because it only costs 30 to go in. And I think we're going to do a bit of experimenting on the formula. I know we only got like 300 points each time last time and that didn't really get us much gold. But I think we're going to try and do kind of like a semi-solo um, to get more points. So we're going to do a bit of experimenting. Okay, trying out new methods in Volcanic Mine and I just died. Uh, you can collect your items from the Volcanic Mine. Hopefully you can use the Numulite that's in your inventory. But man, that is very, very frustrating. Um, Trying out new techniques and uh, learning I need more food. Did a really thorough clear out of the looting bag. Now we've got a load more space. We've only got the herbs that we need, the potions that we need, the secondaries, some coal, and then the poison dagger P++, because I'm not sure we'll be able to get it back easily. 63, and that is 65 mining. Uh, we have been doing a lot of different kind of solo methods at the volcanic mine. I think I've figured out something that's pretty okay, works pretty well. Um, so I'll give you a description of that pretty shortly. 66. Just doing some volcanic mine and a shooting star crashed near me, which is pretty nice. Uh, I actually don't know what level this is, hold on a sec. 40. Okay, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll mine this just for a bit of AFK fun. And just so you know, we're getting through the Numulite, um, but we have also died a hell of a lot. It's really not AFK, so we've died 12 times doing this mini game. So it costs 150 Numulite to get your stuff out. So that's like, what, 1.7k? just on retrieving my items. Um, but we're getting loads of points. I think we've got like 20,000 points and we're spending our points currently just on Volcanic Mine Teleports. It's really helpful to get back. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it's going at the moment. Just got 1500 Stardust from mining that star. And I realized we can get a Celestial Ring if we just mine like 
500 more Stardust, which we can then put the Ring of Wealth in the bag, and then it should give a plus 4 invisible boost to our mining for Volcanic Mine. So may as well do that, honestly, it shouldn't take too long. Right, to facilitate this we're going to build a telescope. We have enough levels to get a Teak Telescope, so here we go. It should get them within about 9 minutes of when they drop. I've never actually used this before, I'm using a plugin to kind of track them so that I don't have to. Um, but we don't want to do it with other people essentially because they run it down much faster. So let's have a look. Very nice view of the wall. What? Oh, does this have to be? Oh, does this have to be rotated. Right, that is more than enough for a celestial ring. So let's buy one of those. Cool. And I think you can charge it, but I don't think it actually matters. So we may as well charge it. Right, that's the casket, and we get what? So weird, but cool, I suppose. Right, so I've been trying a new method uh, to get as many points out of our army light as possible. Uh, this is the gear I'm wearing, highest prayer bonus available, and then we get our inventory full of lobsters. Leave a couple of slots free for the Hebrew vessel, and then we walk to the southwest stairs. So this is gonna be a scuffed solo method, so you're only really gonna be focusing on so this is going to be a scuffed solo method, so you're only going to be focusing on A and B and hoping that the C vents the whole way through is just kind of fine. So run to this spot here, make a bridge. To cap A vent and A chamber, mine it, get some points. Then you come to this point and make another bridge. When he shoots at you, pray. Oh, I'm praying the wrong thing. Uh, check a vent. So you can see here it's 44. It's going down because it's unlocked. So we need to block it up. So it goes up. Um, we might have to cap that later. Then we run over and check B vent. You can see this is going down. Um, we want it to go down it's because it's higher than 50 so that's fine uh, b doesn't tend to move too much at the beginning of the game so that's great and then we just mine the rock until it moves make sure you've got enough inventory space for the fragments that come through now occasionally these will fire up into the air you can dodge them you have to get a couple of squares away otherwise it'll do some splash damage you can do up to 18 so if you're lower than uh, 18 health it's a real risk then occasionally, randomly, the cave will shake. You can see here the cave is shaking uh, and it'll drop these things. These are these can be theoretically avoided and they can go up to like 28 damage. But to be honest, the likelihood of you dodging them is really low. Um, so just get ready to eat when one drops on your square. Now we're looking towards the five minute mark on the time remaining. What we've done here is we've created a bridge um, at the shortest points that we um, use the least amount of water. These bridge points last for one minute, 30 seconds and you'll be able to see them go bright yellow before they disappear. Now you can see A has gotten red. Uh, we've got a minute left, so it should be fine. Uh, at five, it then becomes random again, and we can go check B vent. A should be fine after that point, unless we're very unlucky. As you can see here, this has now become bright yellow. We can move off of it and then create a new one. If you don't get off of it in time, it will essentially one-shot you. It does like 58 damage or something ridiculous. Making good time here. So create another bridge at the shortest point, that is two here. And you can mine here. It's already 10 seconds left, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and check B vent, uh, because at five minutes exactly it will reset. So this is 49 going down. We will have to amend that at some point soon, but it should be fine. The whole point of this method though is to ignore C vents. Uh, it'll take too much time and effort to go and check it and change it. So we just kind of have to hope that it's okay. Um, because B vent and A vent being okay is pretty en usually enough, essentially. You can see here that it's already still at 100% even a minute afterwards. The thing to note is the mine stability. If at any point it's kind of dropping really rapidly, so it, it checks it every 30 seconds. If at any point it drops by like, 10 or 15, you need to go and deal with the vent. And at this point, we also jump over here because then we can deal with B vent directly. Uh, so you can see here, we can just block B vent.
But if ever the mine stability becomes such that it's dropping by like 15 at a time, you need to go and deal with that really quickly. Or you need to see, there you go, that's the damage. Or you need to kind of not fuck about and get out of the mine. Once it hits kind of like 25%, you should already be exiting the mine. Because there's no way of saving it at that point. It's much safer to go get out with, you know, your 500 to 700 points than to kind of risk it for the biscuit and hope the mine kind of succeeds in saving itself. So whilst we're at B, when we have to jump off this thing, we usually just cap the rock and we get extra points. Um, so you can see here, I've just got an extra 100 points. So rather than wasting time. Now this has been a pretty fast game. We've got a minute left, which very rarely happens if we get to the final stages of the game if we're soloing. Um, so you can see here, we've got 46 seconds left. We want to start leaving the mine around 40 seconds. So if we had more time, we'd mine this, which we don't. Uh, you actually get a lot of points for mining at that stage, but you so rarely get there. But you want to be able to get out of the mine. If you get, if don't get out of the mine in time, which is in the next 30 seconds from now, uh, then you die. You just get one shot. The, the mine will kill you. Um, and it's, again, better not to risk it for like a few seconds of extra mining. So we've got out with plenty of time. Um, no risk there, but yeah, really successful game. That was 1300 points turned into 5,000 experience and you know doing this method We've got 43,000 However, you know, you can't really afk you really have to kind of pay attention uh, There are elements you can get afk, right? But the issue is is if you afk for a second too long you die and I've died uh, 13 times I was just checking the looting bags from giant rats I've died 13 times. What we spend our points on currently is Volcanic Mine Teleports. Uh, we teleport to Last Man Standing to regen our stats. We drink from the pool and then we just teleport back and repeat. So I think we've actually been profiting a bit on um, the Numulites. So we've just got sub 18,000 here. Let's see what it looks like in a bit. And now we're at 18.025. That's like nearly 50 gained, nearly 60 gained. So we're trying to spend all our things. Actually, we're doubling it. The only reason it's going down is because we've died so much. Oh, okay. So, so what we're probably going to do is we're going to just do like one capping, then one rate real game, one capping, one real game. That way we can get rid of our stuff. That's so annoying. So we've not shown the in-between levels because I thought there'd be too many and it's not really worth it. But this is quite a significant one. That is 70 mining, which I think means that we can now mine adamant, which means we should get adamant fragments here as well which is pretty good that is 60 cooking still going that's 72 mining in between main game runs we're bidding smaller game runs to get about 405 points which will go through my number light stack which is pretty nice and get us done with this slightly sooner or at all so you come to the southeast side similar to what i did in my previous video but with a bit extra grab the rock mine the rock mine the rock again run over to here you can see we've got 150 points now Create a bridge all the way over here and beyond. Check the vent. That's vent B. Run to here. Check vent C. And run back to the rock. Try and stay on the other side of the rock to the guardian. Um, so you don't have to pray. You can save your prey a bit. And there we go. That's 406 points. That's the maximum amount of points we get on this run, which is 100 more points than the previous style because we went and checked those two vents. That's 50 points each. So. For literally like a minute, uh, this wasn't the fastest run for me because I was explaining it, but for like a minute of work, you can get 400 points. Pretty good. 73 mining, and that is over 100,000 points. One of the things we've been neglecting is a bit is the uh, room crafting XP we get from Jura. Two levels, not too bad. 74 mining, another strange level coming in, 62 cooking. That is just from cooking lobsters so that we can uh, get food for the, uh, the volcanic mine. We are also going to go and do some more lobs catch. This is probably our fifth time doing temple trekking. 120,000 points. Right, we've done a bunch of games and what we are gonna try and do is we're gonna try and do a duo. And by a duo, I mean, I'm gonna be playing both parts. This is my main. Um, and we are going to see how that works. I'm expecting this to die quite a bit, but I'm hopefully only gonna die on my main. So I definitely got more points on Ardy Alt. I got about 1,500, which was a good run. Um, I'd like to do a bit more testing. But controlling two accounts is really annoying. Uh, it's really difficult to do. I wonder whether or not if I can just use my main as a fixer, would the scaling on the rocks still be punishing? 
So as in, would we even get past, you know, the first phase at 7.30, which is what we usually do. All right, we've got our main fixing all the vents. And now we're just going to mine. Usually we'd break this giant boulder at stage one at around seven minutes, 37 minutes around that. Um, so let's see if we were able to do that this time. And there we go. We just broke it then 6.22. So about a minute late. Um, I imagine because of that, we're probably not going to get that many points. Thing. And a usual run, we'd be able to break this rock at around the 5 minute 30 mark, which we're not able to do this time because of the scaling. So, a bit of an issue there. And we only just broke that, so that was that was like 2, maybe 3 minutes late. Um, we usually be able to break that at 5 minutes 30. Uh, we're still getting loads of points though, so I don't think it really matters. Like, I think it's essentially seems like more effort than it's worth to control the second ca account because I'm just getting the same amount of points. The only thing I'm doing is getting an extra 500 or so points in the other account. Yeah, that run was basically an average run for like twice the amount of effort, to be honest. Doesn't seem worth it. 10,000 used, and we just got our highest points game. Over 18,000 points in one game. Pretty cool. From Solo. 160,000 points. And that's 63 cooking. 180,000. And that is 200,000 points. We are going to stop here because we can actually be using uh, the volcanic mine as a death storage for a bit. Um, we've used 12,000 Nomulites. Actually, probably a bit more than that, but then again, a bit less because obviously we've been dying a bit. Uh, we've actually died 15 times in the mine, so, you know, not the uh, most AFK thing in the world. Um, but what we're going to use is death storage to kind of like clean up our inventory and then work on our next things Which are going to be cleaning all the fossils that we found uh, from both herbivore and volcanic mine and to uh, Deal with the stuff in our looting bags. So we kind of want to deal with all of these herbs that we can uh, May as well deal with them now and that should be all good to go We'll be dropping the celestial ring because we can get it back pretty easily with just like an hour of mining the 200,000 points we've got in Volcanic Mine is way more than we need to actually get 60 smithing, which is kind of our goal. We only really needed, you know, I think it was 100,000 points. But we might not even use it for that. It's just good to have the points there. And it's really good that we gained, you know, a bunch of mining levels. So now 77 mining. So pretty, pretty huge, honestly. Um, another reason that I'm stopping now is because it's taken so long. Genuinely, it's taken me a number of weeks to complete this. And you can see here my playtime has increased quite a lot, so um, I'm not going to be able to do the rest of them very easily. So with our inventory as clean as possible, we can take 25 fossils and we can clean them. Right, and now time to put all the bones in their respective places. I mean, have you seen anything more beautiful? I mean, look at that, that's insane. We're going to put all of these into Herblore right now. That one inventory gave us 93.5k herbal XP. Pretty huge. And this is the last of the lamps into herbal. Pretty cool. Gained two herbal levels there. Um, two and a half, really. We are nearly uh, to 66. Okay, time to use all of the herbs and clean up our inventory. We are starting with 1812 doses of prayer pots and 65 herbal. And that is an extra, what, 550 doses of prayer potions and nearly half a level. Clearing up our inventory, we, so we sold the uh, Celestial Ring back to the shop and what we're doing is we're just gonna buy a bunch of gems uh, and then we're just gonna cut those and sell those to the shop uh, just so we can get some crafting XP. Remember, we can get this back pretty easily uh, but we have a ring slot taken up with a ring of wealth at the moment, so we don't need to. Well, holy shit, I did not think I would get that many. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get that many gems. Look at this, it's crazy. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna go deal with this now. Uh, we definitely have enough gems for the medallion now, which is great. So just for reference, we are starting at 60 crafting um, about a portion of the way through the level. Okay, so we've given a rough rubies where we can pick up the medallion whenever we want, which is great news, uh, which means we can sell all of our rubies to a store. Because we need a construction level of 74 to get a mountain dig side pendant, uh, we can't do that just yet. We are nearly there, but not there just yet. Just an interesting one. Uh, we're starting on, well, exactly this amount of money. 1,869,114 coins and 
I think this is going to earn us a bit of money actually. And that is 61 crafting. And that is 1.9 mil. Nearly 2 mil actually. So, you know, 150,000 just doing that. It's pretty good actually. We just got 190 Desert Goat Horn from Desert Goats. Um, we are also one level off of 60 attack, which would let us use the Dragon Dagger. 66 Herb Lore. Right, so we are doing the Aventos now, and we are starting with 735. We are having to do Mortmire Fungus, so this is going to take a really long period of time. 67. And that is the last of the Avento and Super Energy Potions. We nearly got another level, and that is worth... 1.3 mil, pretty cool. Um, we probably don't need any more energy potions for the rest of our lives. Uh, the reason we're keeping these is so we can turn them into stand pots. So any other avantos we get, we're probably just going to make them into a pot and drop it. 68, 69, 70. And that is the last of the irrits. Uh, that took us a few hours to do, uh, but we gained quite a lot of experience. So nearly 71 herb lore, pretty insane. Huge level on an Iron Man. Moving on to the last of the Quirms, the actual limiting factor here is limp work roots and we're now gonna have to kind of clear Quirms as we go really. So we're not gonna be able to do that all now. But we should get to 71 here. 71 herb lore. And that is probably the last herb lore level we're going to get. Ooh, super defense picks. Um, we're gonna finish off these limp work roots and then we're going to go do something else for the first time in a long time and that is over a thousand super strength pots so about a fifth of the irits but it's much harder to get the secondary so quite happy with that really really good progress on the herb law we've made so i think we've gained like 500k xp total i mean just today on irits and quirms we've gained 282,000 experience Right, we have tidied up our inventory, we've gotten rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, we can still put more stuff in the looting bag. Looting bag is pretty clear as well. Uh, we've cleaned up all the herbs that we can. This is our current stats. So the next goal is actually just to finish off 60 pack. That way we can wield the dragon dagger. And we also need to get 53 fishing to start the next quest, which is Hero's Quest. So we're still hunting lesser demons. So we're going to go and do that in the catacombs of Karend to get our melee up. And with this final hit, we get 60 attack, which is a huge upgrade. Dragon weaponry. We can now finally wield the dragon axe that we've had for ages. Um, and I shouldn't have done that because I wanted to do DDS. Um, but we can also wield our dragon dagger. Bam. Nice. Oh, there's a dragon impling here. Let's quickly grab this. Summer pies, hello, that's good food. And now we can clart somebody out. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't, <laughs> didn't even one shot him. I was doing more damage with the mace, I swear. And for the first time in a while, we were doing something pretty AFK, which is nice. Um, we, well, there you go, <laughs> there's a fishing level right there. Um, we're aiming for 53 fishing, so 10 more levels, just after that one, so that we can do Hero's Quest. Now we've cleaned up the inventory quite a lot. We just shoved all the extra stuff into the looting bag that we can get out again. It's not the end of the world because we're gonna have to go to Entrana anyway. So we're gonna have to uh, get the stuff out of the looting bag anyway. And the reason we've chosen this spot, which is north of Piscorilius, is just because there is a little kitchen here, uh, which is very, very close by. 44, 45, 46, 64 cooking, 47, 48, 49, 50. 65 cooking, 51, 52, and that is 53 fishing, which is the final requirement for Hero's Quest. During the fishing, we were able to get some caskets completed as well from just fishing. So that's six beginner and one medium. So let's open them now. Useless, useless. I mean, good for a beginner, let's be honest. Uh, beginner starter set. Repeat and also useless. Okay, that, that is very expected from beginners. We're still looking for the Zami hilt. All right, and this is the medium. Ooh, ancient blessing. That's not bad. Pretty good, actually. We've already got a blessing, but you know, it doesn't hurt to have two. And that's the ancient blessing stored in the house. Right, so we're gonna suicide to the volcanic mine again, and then we have a free storage to do hero's quest, and maybe a couple of other bits of other quests too, 
that require zero inventory space. Right, we are going to relocate our house to Relica. That way we can complete some of the Fermenic Trials, which require zero inventory space. We are in the Fermenic Lands. We haven't really been here much before. Um, there is a quest we want to start, which is the Fermenic Trials. And there are two sections of this quest that we can do with a blank inventory. And that is like beating up the guy without anything in inventory, which is you need around 50s and I have 60s. So it should be, a, should be fine. But you can take in food. Um, and you can actually take in a casket, which I luckily got whilst uh, harpooning stuff. So uh, if, if that has a weapon in it, we actually are good to use it. And there's another one where you have to go into like a basement and do all the things. I don't know. Uh, it sounds pretty sus, but there's another thing we can do. So we may as well do that now and then complete the rest of it later. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. We can't teleport out. We will lose everything in the death storage that we've got in the volcanic mine. We have a full inventory of food, so it should be okay. Can't use prayers. Oh, maybe maybe they fixed it so you can't use a casket anymore. Oh no. Oh, oh no, there he is. Okay, so what we're gonna do is open the casket. We got a dagger. This is perfect. Ha <laughs> ha. See, uh, now we can use a weapon because we didn't bring in a weapon. We brought in a casket. Man, I'm destroying this guy. I've always wanted to try it and try try bringing in a weapon. Because you can bring in a German staff as well, or you can bring in a German branch and then. Cut it into a drum and stuff. So the last one we need to do is peer the seers. We've got nothing in inventory, can't have anything in inventory. So let's just quickly complete this. Felt like I was in, uh, I think it's Die Hard 3, but there we go. We are done and we've got a herring to eat. Fantastic. If you already don't have all your stuff like I do, really easy way to get to Entrana is just using the, uh, the balloon transport, obviously. Now for another fight to the death. Well, that was easy. Oh, it's hot. Oh no, I need the ice gloves first, don't I? I did not think of this. Unlucky. Thank you very much to Laziest Name for helping in, in Hero's Quest. And now we have the ice gloves that I can pick up the fire feather. Bosh. And that is the Hero's Quest completed with a bunch of XP. Oh, level. Nice. But it gives me access to the Heroes Guild, which is really, really nice. And we can buy a Dragon Battle Axe and Dragon Mace, you know, if I was made of money. And if you didn't know, it's a requirement to complete Heroes Quest for Dragon Slayer 2. And that is the Fremenic Trials completed. Bunch of experience points. And we got wood cutting up. That's nice. And now we can start the Fremenic Quest really when we need to get to it. And that is another inventory resource intensive quest completed. Shiloh Village, which is done which is the last prerequisite for Legends Quest. We are going to complete the Legends Quest. We're going to complete Heroes Quest and Legends Quest in this episode. Um, should be well uh, able enough to complete Legends Quest. It's just a bunch of different things we have to have in inventory. Now is not the time, Beekeeper. Okay, this is round two. I'm killing Neznik Ched or whatever his name is uh, because I died during the last fight because I ran out of prayer. And... Um, I couldn't get back into the area because you need these notes and obviously they were on my dead body. So we almost wiped. So let's just kill this and hope for the best. Come on, you son of a bitch. Hey, nice. Herb law, because we always go herb law. Oh yeah, oh yeah, herb law. I mean, if I was a smart man, I'd put some of it into smithing, but I'm not, so. This is like 30,000 herb law XP, it's crazy. We are a legend, 30,000 herb law XP. And we have now access to the Legends Guild. And now we have access to a bunch of shops in here. The totem will uh, actually charge uh, Dragonstone like skills necklaces. I'm not sure whether or not it does the Ring of Wealth. Um, there are a couple of really good shops in here. Some decent food. And we can buy the Iconic Shield right half. The Cape of Legends, which is pretty cheap actually. Um, it'll be a best cape until... Uh... And now we've used the Fountain of Heroes on our Amulet of Glory. And we have a charged Amulet of Glory means that we now get gems whilst mining, which is really nice. In a questing mood, so we've just completed Pirate's Treasure, which is a pretty big quest for only one reason though, and that is because now we've finished all of the free quests, which is pretty cool. Um, and we've actually completed quite a lot of the members quests, to be honest. Arguably the funniest quest in all of RuneScape, Hand in the Sand is now completed with 9,000 crafting XP, it's pretty good. And the Wizard Guild Rune Store, which is really, really nice. So we've done a lot of big quests in this episode, Heroes Quest, Legends Quest, yeah, Pirate Treasure. We're going to end it on the big quest, which is Monkey Madness 1. Uh, the reason we want to do Monkey Madness 1 is because we want to start training our 
of attack. We've got a 60 attack now. We want to start doing Slayer, that kind of stuff. And we want to get a Dragon Scimitar. So Monkey Man is one. Let's do it. I know that this isn't a real proper maze, but I really do enjoy the uh, blue line given by the quest helper. And that is the jungle demon killed. Ooh, give me them malicious ashes, boy. And that is Monkey Madness 1 completed. Jungle demon killed. Let us go. Well, yes, yeah, so let's go and get some uh, training. You can get that from uh, Yarda, whatever his name is. I think we're going to go with strength and stamina. So that's attack. That should be strength and HP. Wow. Huge levels here. Now, if we trade dagger, we should be able to buy ourselves a D scimitar that costs, what, like 90,000? Absolutely worth it. Huge upgrade. Really, really good. Whilst I'm here, if we trade with the magic guy, we can get a monkey talisman and a monkey dentures. And then we can store those at Zunok for when we need to, uh, which is the guy who made all the talisman stuff. Uh, for when we need them later in Monkey Madness 2. Or I think Recipe for Disaster, possibly. Apparently you can't store these things. So it is what it is. Look at this. Oh, that is so satisfying. That is huge. These, these attack bonuses are amazing as well. Look. 66 strength, 67 slash. Amazing. This is literally as good as it's going to get until an Abyssal Whip, essentially. Oh man, that is quite satisfying to have. Right, it's actually a really nice end to the episode, but what we we'll usually do is we usually end the episode on a bunch of medium clues. So we've got nine clues to get till 40, so let's go and catch Eclectic Implings until we can get some uh, medium caskets stacked. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, and that is the final casket, number nine. So we have got nine caskets in the inventory we are 31 clues in which means we'll be 40 at the end of this this episode what we've done is we used a large amount of the Numulite, so like 11,000 of it and got 200,000 points at volcanic mine we then cleaned and used all the herbs we then got 53 fishing for completion of hero's quest then completion of fermentic trials then completion of shadow village then completion of legends quest then completion of pirate's treasure and then hand in the sand and then Monkey Madness giving us the Dragon Scimitar. And then we are ending it on the Royal Caskets Medium. This might be a bit of a short episode, but it took a really long time to do um, for me because the Volcanic Mine section actually took a really long period of time. So 34 days played, 11 hours. 75 combat. So when we start using Slayer with the Dragon Scimitar, we can actually go to Konar. So let's open some of these caskets. Okay. Not a terrible start. We uh, need to rebuild, rebuild the cash stack anyway. Ooh, pest control teleports. Interesting. Not very useful, but interesting. Okay. Again, not hitting anything really at the moment. Lots of cooked food, which will be good for the Slayer we're about to do. Ooh, this is some real uh, sets of armor. Inventory cleared, four more to go. More food. The master scroll book. Oh, a Guthans page. Might be able to put that in. Two more to go. Purple sweets. Okay. Last casket magic. More purple sweets. All right. You know, not terrible. We didn't get anything we really wanted, but. Let's see if we can put this Gothic's page in. So according to my clan, if I keep the Master Scroll Book, which I just got, and put my teleports in it, the next time I get the Master Scroll Book, we'll have the teleports I put in it. That's so weird. Well, may as well do that. Looks like we can store that Gothic's page, which is really good. One day we'll have a complete book, I believe it. As always, thank you very much for watching. Always appreciate it. And I'm glad for the big gains. See you next time.